Hey y'all, this is Troy. So I actually have an apology to make to you, especially if you're someone who listens to my videos fairly often, or if you keep up with these words that I've been sharing. One of the things the Lord has been pointing out to me lately, before I get into this word that God gave me to share about Michelle Obama, is the simple idea that when I sit down to film, there is another influence that is affecting the way in which I say things. And realistically, the thing that it's affecting in a major way is how long it takes me to say something. And that influence is the fear of you, <laughs> the fear of those who are listening, okay? And what they might say. I've gotten a lot of comments from people saying, please make your videos shorter, you know? And it's like, there's a part of me that would love to do that. But the Holy Spirit was simply showing me recently and has been telling me, this is something you need to get over. And this is something that you need to stop doing. And so I just want to apologize publicly to everyone listening for that. That has been something that I've been carrying and it probably has affected the way in which I've shared what God is asking me to share. So I want to apologize for that. My heart is not to grow a massive ministry. My heart is to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. And my secondary goal is to reach people with the gospel. And so whatever that looks like, Whatever the Lord asked me to do, that is what I'm intending to do. And that's my hope. One of the things I've noticed is that we've become a culture that is so focused on the new and the next, even in the Christian community, even on the Christian side of things. We've gotten so fast paced that we have a hard time hearing from the Lord for ourselves because we don't take time to wait upon the Lord. We don't take time to listen. But one of the things that I've noticed, some of the people that I listen to, there are people online that I listen to that have been a huge encouragement in my life. And one of the things I've noticed is the ones that have made the biggest impact and the ones where as soon as I turn it on, I sense the presence of God there. The Holy Spirit is speaking through them. They're the ones that don't care how long it takes for them to deliver the message. So that is going to change on this channel. I'm just letting you know that up front. I'm going to stop caring how long it takes because my goal is not to get a three minute video out, five minute video out, or something that's going to appeal to a large audience. Now, I'm praying that these videos will get in front of a lot of people. Why? Because I want people to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, which I share in a lot of these videos. But my goal is to be obedient. And I believe that we will see the fruit of that obedience, not just in my life, not just in these videos, but each one of us, as we take a step back and we examine our hearts and we allow the Holy Spirit to continue molding us and changing us and correcting us and even slowing us down. You know, I think in a lot of cases, the Holy Spirit is wanting to slow us down. And, and it, man, I hear this from the Lord right now for many people. You don't need to do so much. That's not what it's all about. Just get the right things done, I hear the Lord saying. Do that and you will see the fruit no matter what else gets done. See, a lot of times, I'm not telling y'all to be irresponsible. I'm not saying that. But a lot of times we add things to the list that are not necessary. So this is what I heard about Michelle Obama. I heard the Lord say this on December 7th, and I actually saw something come out in the news the morning that I'm filming this video. I think this is still going to apply to future events as well. So I don't think there's anything wrong with me sharing it now, but I'll, I'll share that in a second. What I heard the Lord say is she's playing her harp but the nations don't like what they hear. And then the Lord told me that this is in reference to Michelle Obama. And so what I saw in the news this morning was that she just essentially made a statement like she's afraid of the outcome of this coming election or what may come out of it, that she's frightened by it, you know, and obviously that's a political statement. It's a, it's a political play and all that kind of stuff. But the Lord also asked me to read Ezekiel 2, 8 through 9. I did not know what this said, so I went and looked it up. This is what it says. It says, Now you, son of man, listen to what I'm speaking to you. Do not be rebellious like that rebellious house. Open your mouth wide and eat what I am giving you. And then it says, Then I looked, so Ezekiel looks, and it says, And behold, a hand was extended to me, and behold, a scroll was in it. So I just sense the Holy Spirit saying this. I'm giving you an option. I hear the Lord say, I'm giving you an option right now. You're going to either eat what the world is feeding you and the lies and the fear 
that they've created in a lot of cases that is just manufactured in order to control you, or you're going to eat the words that I give you. You're going to consume that. You're going to have life and liberty and freedom. Man, that is a good word from the Lord. And I heard the Lord say this. He said, they will try to take what is light and make it dark again. So this could be in reference to a few different things. The first thing is the gospel message itself. The word of God says that the gospel was hidden, the mystery that God hid throughout the ages until Jesus came. And then the Holy Spirit revealed it to the apostles in the New Testament, and especially to the apostle Paul. I mean, if you actually read the scriptures, the apostle Paul is one of the main preachers of the gospel in the word of God. You don't see it too often in the rest of the word. It's mostly Paul and obviously the other New Testament writers as well. But the Lord used Paul in a, in a mighty way to reveal what this great mystery was. And the culture would love to shut down the message of Jesus Christ, and they would love to pervert it. But listen, this happens in the church as well. They will try to take what is light and make it dark again. The other thing, though, is just twisting what God is doing in the culture. Whatever the hand of God is on, looking at it and calling it evil, calling it false. Now, this is chapter 7, verse 19. It says, They will fling their silver into the streets, and their gold will become an abhorrent thing. Their silver and their gold will not be able to save them on the day of the wrath of the Lord. So the Lord pointed me to this verse, too, and I believe he's simply using it as an illustration to say, nobody is getting away with anything. No one's getting away with anything. They haven't tricked the system. And then I hear the Lord say, why? Because ultimately... I'm in charge of the system. Ultimately, the system itself has to bow the knee to my name. I hear the Lord say. And I also heard the Lord say this earlier. He said, there's something more important to fear. There's something more important to fear. See, and I believe this is in reference to Michelle Obama saying she's afraid of the election results and all that. And what is that thing? I mean, one thing is ultimately the wrath of God that is going to be poured out on Judgment Day. You know, like once we all stand before the Lord, once Jesus returns, but here's the good news for Christians today. Jesus Christ took the wrath of God upon himself for your sake. And if you're listening to this video, maybe some of this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, but you do need to understand this, is that God loves you. And listen, my friend, because he loves you, Jesus Christ, the son of God came to the earth. He lived a perfect life and he died on a cross. And when he died, he took God's wrath upon himself. What does that mean? That means God is, is just and he's holy and we were not but he loved us so much that he put the punishment for our unholiness upon himself he came and he took that so that we could become friends with him again so that we could be near him so that we could be forgiven and the word of god actually says there's no more fear in love so there are christians listening to me today you're listening to me and you've been walking in fear it's not the fear of god like the awe of god that scripture talks about it's not that it's not living by God's standard. It's a unhealthy fear of punishment because you don't understand what Jesus really did for you on the cross. And the, the Lord is just is encouraging me to share the, the book of Hebrews with you right now. Go read the book of Hebrews and then go read the book of Galatians and then the book of Romans. The Lord is going to use these books to more fully explain to you, if that's you, if you're living in that fear of punishment, he's going to explain to you through these books what Jesus did for you. And man, it is going to radically shake up and transform your life. And I hear the Lord saying, I'm going to strip fear off of you from this day forward. The Lord uh, in the middle of the night last night began to speak to me and he said, it's time to remove the safety net. So I've just got a few more things to share, but he said, it's time to remove the safety net. There's something inside of each of us that wants to feel safe. There's something inside of every single human being that wants to feel like you're in a safe place, a safe position. Listen, you are safe in the love of God. And many people today are running after a person, whether it be someone, you know, in politics or someone in the media or a, a Christian, you know, like leader, whatever it is, many people are running after a person to make them feel safe. And, you know, on the other hand, we're running away from the people that don't make us feel safe. <laughs> you know, the, 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 both things are happening. But what happens is, is we flock to people that make us feel safe. But I'm reminded of a time when uh, me and my brother were in the car and a couple of our siblings were with us. My brother Wayne was driving this car. And suddenly what happens is a car pulls out into an intersection in front of us and stops in the intersection. And there was a car right ahead of us that stopped in time 
But we were moving so fast that I could tell we were not going to be able to stop in time to avoid hitting the car right in front of us. And the other problem was we couldn't just get over into the lane of oncoming traffic because there was a car coming right at us in the oncoming lane. And it was a little ways up ahead. And in that moment, everything I knew about driving, I'm looking around and I'm thinking, there's no way we're going to get out of hitting this car unless we just run into the ditch or something, you know, which would also be bad. And so I'm thinking we're about to be in a wreck. And then Wayne does something I did not expect. Instead of hitting the brakes and praying for the, for the best results, he hits the gas. He hits the gas and he goes into the other lane, the oncoming traffic lane and zooms around the cars in the intersection. And it, because he hits the gas, he makes it back into the lane we're supposed to be in before the oncoming car is close enough to hit us. And he, he zooms around super fast and it was like a lightning fast decision. And I remember thinking in that moment, number one, I had a lot more profound admiration for his impulsive nature in that moment. I was like, wow, that, I would not have done that. I would not have th thought to do that. But also I realized the reason he was able to do that was because he was a lot better at driving than I was. You see, he had spent time driving that car. He had spent time probably driving recklessly. I don't know, but he knew how to handle the vehicle and I did not. And, and a lot of Christians, we, we put up safety nets in our lives because we don't think that the Holy Spirit's capability is enough. We don't understand how much of a professional he is. And the Lord says, hand me that steering wheel. And we hand, we say, okay, God, I'm gonna take my hands off the wheel. You drive, you lead me. But then we put up all these safety nets. One of the things in scripture that has always weirded me out is how there's all these people that go out to John the Baptist in the wilderness, and he's preaching the message of repentance. They go out there, they repent, they get baptized. But a lot of those same people, where were those people when they were yelling, crucify Jesus? Where were those people? They were the same people. They were a lot of the same people that had gone out and repented were some of the same ones that were yelling crucify him later. So what happened there? They were using, some of them were using repentance as a safety net because it was the safe thing to do. But then when it came to something that was not safe, like standing up for the son of God, they were unwilling to do it. Even his disciples, you know, like ran away and hid. And this is the question that God has for us today is, are you willing to remove the safety nets that you've been keeping in place because you are afraid of what I may tell you to do, what I may ask you to do? What is the safety net? It's the Holy Spirit. It's his presence in our lives. And it's the word of God. It's the truth of God. It's not something else. It's not something that's based in our efforts or our works. See, a lot of us, we go back to, well, I'll just work really hard, then that'll fix it. No. It's the truth of the gospel. If you're gonna fall on something that's actually gonna catch you, continue to fall back on the gospel truth. And continue to fall back on what God has said. And even when that sounds hard, when you keep standing on that word, here's what's gonna happen, is you are going to develop a profound trust in the one who's driving the vehicle. The same way that after we got through that experience with me and my brother, I was like, wow, anytime we're driving, like Wayne, you can drive because I trust you to know what to do more than I trust myself, you know? And I hear the Lord say, once you get through this fire that you're walking through, if you will remove the safety nets and you will trust me to lead you through it, the Lord is saying, then on the other side, you're going to be able to hand me your life to a greater extent than ever before, because you're gonna see that I'm trustworthy, that I'm faithful. For some people you're in this, and I heard this word last night, for some people you feel like you're in a house that's burning down. And I just sense the Lord said this, he's not saying it to be facetious, He's saying it to make a point, but he said, you should might as well throw another log on the fire because by the time you see the deliverance that's coming, that's headed your way, it's not gonna matter how bad it got before that. It's not gonna matter. Just like the three men in the fiery furnace, they were past being able to be delivered and God still delivered them. Their time had expired and God still said, no, there's a way out. They didn't have a safety net. Think about that. They did what God told them to do. They had nothing to fall back on except for God's faithfulness. He came through for them. And he's gonna come through for you too when you continue to trust in his word and do what he says. Thank you, Lord. Man, I'm just feeling the presence of God on that. That's good, y'all. That's good. All right. Y'all share this video if the Lord leads you to do that. If y'all would like to learn more about this ministry, you can go to troyblackvideos.com. I love y'all so much. I'll see you next time.